I'm Angela Brockway. This is my daughter. I'm Madison Bartlett. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay, so the program is an outdoor education program, and it's uh, it's for the grade five students on the west coast of Newfoundland right now. I'm sure there are other outdoor education programs, but the one we're talking about is uh, based out of Kill Devil Camp in um, Gross Morn. And uh, what it is, is a two and a half day kind of gathering for the kids to be there with their teachers and they learn on the land and it's, it's a beautiful program. So my daughter Madison was there this year with her grade five class and I went as a chaperone and we had a great time. So Madison, what, what do you think about it? Um, well, it was really fun. It was better than having to do work in a classroom because you got to do it outside and just be free, stretch, do whatever. Um, and I got to like hang out with my friends that weren't in my class. So yeah, we, uh, uh, we, <clears throat> there were a lot. I'll, I'll help you out with this, okay? So it's okay for us to like banter a little bit here because, yeah. <laughs> Um, so think about the first day when we got there, you guys just got all set up and we had a meal and stuff. So what, what did we do? Everybody just kind of congregated and we ate and went and right we to free time, free time, but then went right to sleep <laughs> activities, activities. Yeah. But I can't so, remember. Well, okay. The first so time. we, um, you did a little bit of science. A little bit of English, a little bit of math, a little bit of everything. English? Yeah. When? when? You were walking through the trees. Remember doing the tree talk and all that stuff? I don't remember. Okay, so we're walking through the trees, and the teacher is asking you to listen and write something about the things that you hear, the things oh, that you see. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so that was like poetry, right? Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, it was really beautiful. Oh, uh, this guy taught us how to tell, I think it was like, how to tell the difference between moose poop and rabbit poop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think the success can be measured by the kids, the reaction to it and what they've learned from it. It's, it's palpable to be in there and just feel their energy and how excited they are to be outside. And the fresh air just brings a whole new life to them. And the measurement of success is right there in their faces and then their reactions to it afterwards and the things that, the way they carry that back with them and the memories that they make, it's just awesome. Yeah. He learned a lot of stuff, but that was a few months ago, so. Okay, how about if I just <laughs> jog your memory a little bit? Because yeah. maybe um, something that you didn't know before you went there was about the medicines medicines that make my people would have used years and years ago did you learn anything about that did that make sense to you it did and I didn't know anything about that kind of medicine before I went there and like I don't know <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Yeah. That was uh, in a teepee, right? That was my favorite one. Yeah. It felt like it was, you know, we were doing something from many, many years ago, sitting in a teepee with a fire in the middle. And uh, Nicole Travers taught us that day. And uh, I say us because I felt like I was a student there. And um, she just showed the kids about the medicines and talked a little bit about the directions and their meanings in Mi'kmaq culture. And it was, I think it's probably the first um, introduction for a lot of those kids to that type of culture and heritage, which is unfortunate because a lot of them actually are from that culture. And this might be the first time they've ever learned something like that. So, yeah. And what, what else did, um, what about the music? Do you remember the songs? Yeah, and it was like, it sounded like it was like in a different kind of language or something. It was in a different language. Yeah. Yeah. What language was it? It was the Mi'kmaq language, but it's really difficult to pronounce if you don't know how to, if you've never heard it before. 
That's how people learned. They would pass it on from, you know, pass it down generation to generation. And, I mean, they learned the language the same way we learn English, right? Well, my favorite part was um, there was this activity where we got to swing on a rope. We we had to, like, hold something and then swing over a rope and, like, put it down or something. Or we'd have to, like, throw it back to the other person. Or we have to like tie it to the rope and then swing the rope back to give it to the other person. It was like a bag or something. Yeah. So, and um, some other really good parts of the camp was, well, I shared a cabin with some of my close friends and my best friend. I just think that I. I learned a little bit more of my culture, so I knew what it was all about, but I didn't, like, it didn't really change me. I just, I was happy that I learned more. Uh, I didn't have this program, as I've said. Uh, in grade five. So I did get to attend the program twice. I was there with my son in 2016 and again with my daughter this year in 2018 in the fall. Last year. Yeah, last year. And it was life altering for me as an adult. Um, I'm not sure that we'll see that in the kids just yet. Maybe in years to come, they can recognize that certain things came from that experience. But as an adult, I can remember leaving there with just a sense of like a powerful feeling that our kids just learned something amazing. They just had a beautiful experience that they're not going to have anywhere else. It was something that sat with me for a long time. And when my son went there in 2016, I can just remember leaving there and saying, I need to be there for when my daughter goes. And the very first day of school this year, I sent in my form to become a volunteer. It was like first day of school. I need to be there for this. And that was before I was involved in my current work, which is with the Halibut First Nations office. And... Um, being there at the program, again, was just, it, it's life-altering. It's a life-altering experience to be there as an adult. And uh, I spoke with some of the girls that worked there at the time, and I, I had said to them as if we were leaving, you know, just thank you so much. And you guys, you have my dream job. I could only wish to be doing that. And little did I know, three months later, that would be my job. So, yeah, yeah, it's very, very exciting. And, I mean, for me, it's just been a profound experience, and I, I can only hope that our kids are able to build off it, you know, with the same kind of feelings and the same kind of experiences. Yeah. 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 Um, we had a smudging. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. The smudging was a, a really beautiful ceremony. And, and I love the reaction of the kids because the kids, for the most part, it's the first time they've done that. And, and the feeling is kind of like embarrassment. It's like, what do I do? I don't, I don't understand this. This is new to me. And, and they're looking around and they're watching other people as they begin to smudge. And it looks like, you know, they're doing different movements. They're pulling the, the smoke towards them. And this is a cleansing ritual. And they're learning by watching other people do it. And uh, as it comes to them, it's like, you know what? You, you did it. I'm going to do it so that this person can do it. And you see that embarrassment kind of just melt away and they become a group of people that's doing something together for the first time. So smudging ceremony was absolutely beautiful. Um, before every meal, we had a little sing-along. So yeah. we're um, at, for example, like a church camp type of thing, you would do a prayer before you would eat. Um, there were prayers said in a little bit of a different perspective, um, but we would always sing before we ate and the songs were traditional Mi'kmaq songs. And by the end of camp, which was only a couple of days, the kids were singing right along with the songs. Yeah. And we had several people, the kids were up drumming. Did you get up drumming? No. No, but there were, um, of course, there were so many kids and there was only a few drums, but some of your friends were up drumming yeah. and stuff. And yeah, yeah. So those were the traditional parts of it, besides some of the learnings that we got while we were there. And I again, did. I say we because I felt like a student. <laughs> I, I did raise my hand to go up to go drumming, but they chose somebody else. Yeah, because <laughs> there weren't really enough drums for everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It'd be nice if, if that was something that we could put off at camp making drums 
Right? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. But anyhow, we'll see how it goes in the future. This is when they get their introduction to it, first uh, at camp. Although sometimes not first at camp. They do a fall camp and a spring camp, and it alternates by year. So this year was the fall camp. So that was their first experience this year. And now coming into February, March, we've got uh, a couple of visits to most of the schools in the area. The ones that we work with, um, that we do school outreach with, uh, we'll have a mini powwow and we'll have some other sessions there with some local groups and, and get together for like some of the ceremonies. They'll get another taste of it they'll make rattles so that's another part of our school outreach that we do other than the outdoor education program um but yeah this is where they first start with that is in grade five and i think it's a good place to start because they've got they're just starting to get some of those social connections this is something that's starting to be important to them so yeah building on those groups and stuff at, at that age yeah really important i think uh, from my perspective, Indigenous education is something that's for everybody, number one, not just Indigenous people. It's about respect. It's about um, being simple. It's about living off the land. It's about being one with nature and being respectful of the things that we have around us and our resources and not taking things for granted. And a big part of that is taking what we know and passing that knowledge on to the people that are small to us. And we have to teach them how to do those things. So Indigenous education to me is everything that we pass on to our kids that is of real importance. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think everything is important to pass down to the next generation. I, one thing that really comes to mind when I think about this program is I do a bit of comparison to what life was like when I was that age. And I can remember being 10 years old and living in a very different social climate where to be a Newfoundlander was to be a part of a culture where uh, the cod fishery was dying out. Um, we heard about the, the cod moratorium. That was the big news. That was something that was, you know, was a big deal. It was a loss of jobs for a lot of people. It meant an exodus of families from the province. And there was so much uncertainty. It was really a hard time to kind of grow up and, and feel like you were a part of something good. I feel like if we had had something that had brought us a little closer to our culture as people, as Newfoundlanders, as maybe you were a part of the Mi'kmaq culture, which of course at that time we knew nothing about. Um, I feel like if we had made some of those connections, we would have had um, a better uh, understanding of the positive side of being a Newfoundlander and maybe it would have kept us a little closer to our home where I saw you know when I graduated high school so many people moved away and it was just that's what you did you just moved away if you want a life if you want something good if you want to strive for something you have to go away to do that and I feel like that's just it, it's not right and if we had had more of a connection to our own land our own history we would have been more likely to stay here and to, you know, make our own opportunities here and to pride ourselves in the things that we did here. Yeah, I think we need to pass that on to the kids and outdoor education to me is the starting point of that, bringing them back to the land, getting them back to basics, teaching them that what we have here is something to be proud of and they need to take that and, and build it into their own lives and hopefully they can take that and use it as a source of pride and something that they can build on for the future. Well, I feel like right now we're in the infancy of what we can do with Indigenous education. We're just beginning to see uh, some of these things actually come to the table in our school system. And before now, it was more of a, um, uh, a bit of a fight to try to get our culture and our background as a piece of knowledge that we have in the mainstream every day. Um, now we're seeing, of course, uh, across Canada with uh, the reconciliation of, you know, Indigenous peoples with the, uh, the schools, the Oh my goodness, edit this part, please. The residential schools and um, the horrors of those times and, and the reconciliation that's coming from that, you can feel that all across Canada. 
So there, there is more uh, focus on that right now, which is wonderful. I think Indigenous education in our province um, eventually will have to go a little more in the direction of looking at what our culture is and the history of our people. So if we are able to go in the direction of making Indigenous education really important, we'll be able to get back to the basics of our own history. So we can look back at the Mi'kmaq people who lived here and the Biafic people who lived here and so on. I mean, that we've got six First Nations groups here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So it's really important to include that as a part of our history and a part of our education. Uh, so that we can identify a little bit more with who we are, where we came from, instead of looking at our history books and our social studies books and seeing history of um, Europeans and, you know, uh, Canada when it started 150 years ago. I, I mean, that's important history, but it's not everything. And it doesn't bring us very far back. I think we, when we look at Indigenous education, we're looking at building on roots. And that's so important for, for everybody. And that's for Indigenous people, people who identify as Indigenous and people who don't at all. Everybody can learn something from that. I, I feel so fortunate that I live in a time where I can watch my kids grow up and feel this culture in their own lives. I wish I had had a piece of that as a 10 year old. I feel like um, I, I moved here, uh, my family's from here, and we were born, my sister and I, my twin sister and I, we were born in Edmonton, and we didn't move back here until we were eight. And I can remember moving here into a just such a negative space. Everybody was worried. Everybody was scared they were gonna lose their jobs. Everybody was thinking about moving away, like I had said earlier. and. It was, it was a hard way to try to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Try to be happy. Well, yeah, to try to be happier and to try to feel pride in where you're from and to really like put down your roots into the ground. You didn't know if that was the thing to do because Newfoundland seemed like a, a maybe place. Maybe we shouldn't be here. Maybe this isn't the right thing. You know, maybe, maybe if we're here, we're going to be poor. Maybe by being on an island, we're going to run out of resources because we have no connections to our own land. We rely on the mainland. Maybe there's a lot of things we need to worry about. So I think, yeah, we need, we need to bring our own selves back to the land, back to being more self-sufficient, um, you know, working at our own resources without depending on mainland and, uh, yeah, I think I think indigenous everything brings us back there. We have a lot to learn. We have a long way to go.